students good evening i welcome you all for a new topic and a new session we are starting today with a nice interesting come a very easy chapter for today it is the strategies for the enhancement in the food production so that is going to be the topic for the day okay so uh, i welcome everybody so we are going to start today yes the strategies for enhancement in food production okay so let me start so coming on for this chapter what is going to be the objective or plan of this particular topic so we can see that that we are going to do what is uh the topic that we are going to do okay so let me start with it so here i'm going to give you an introduction and then we are going to see about today on animal husbandry in animal husbandry we are going to see okay uh on management of farms okay and then we are going to see about the animal breeding then beekeeping fisheries plant breeding acha then uh, single cell protein and tissue culture so these are the objective that we are going to see in the forthcoming as well as of the today's session so today we are going to start okay with uh, the strategies for the enhancement in food production <laughs> so coming on for this chapter i think i'm audible now i welcome you all students today for this nice interesting topic on the strategies for the enhancement in food production okay so let me start with this chapter so in this chapter we are going to see the overview on the topics that is what is the objective at the end of this the sessions what will be the objective we are going to see the introduction the animal husbandry the plant breeding single cell protein and the tissue culture okay so these will be the uh things that we are going to okay so that will be very important so that is what we are going to see for today okay so then we are going to see what is the next coming to the introduction so now you should know that the food that is very vital right it's very vital as well as it's an important nutrient component to all the human beings it is vital to human health and at the same time you should also know that the nutrition like it's meant for the nutrition also so man has been for years together right he has been using this plant and animal resource for himself to fulfill his requirements particularly the food requirements as in the early days like you take prehistoric and all he used to go hunt for the food yes then what happened then he became what we call like in the term like civilized he become more civilized so as the civilization started up he started moving himself to in in agriculture the animal rearing right all these started up with it and as things move on he as he becomes more civilized it becomes more uh, industrialized and there's more technological advancement so as these are changing up the strategies also are changing particularly for enhancing in the food production okay so that is very uh, important okay so that is very important so you have to know here uh, one concept like what is meant is the world food day yes what is the world food day the world food day is actually the international day that we are celebrating in honor of 
the finding the food and agriculture the association sought in united states in 1945 so every year they have a motto and every year they do celebrate it on you can see it is celebrated on the uh, the October 16th of every year, the World Food Day. So here this year, the concept is food safety and uh, we are having, so the concept here is this year. Achha? One minute. Ah. So this year, the, the concept is on food safety, right? And everyone's business. So this is the concept of this year world food day right so this is that and nearly around 150 countries do participate in putting out and announcing that the world food day is on 16th of october now we know that there is a rapid increase in the world population it is not like what you think it is something like a very dramatic and a very huge uh, such an explosive rise in the population so you can see that countries they are self-sufficient in terms of basic food production so the ones which you can see here they are able to make up their own food the basic food production but see there are places where they don't have that facility to also so you can see that the people everywhere they have what is the food shortage by continent actually like millions together of this population so we have various countries do have these issues like majority you can see in africa that in that continent like nearly around some 36 countries are being having and facing the food shortage okay so that is uh, very important that you all should know okay uh, then another thing that you need to know here is okay so another thing that which you are uh, supposed to know here is in the terms of say the other countries like middle east or american and other even there they do have these problems okay so you can see that when there is such a shortage what happened people started to try and solve what not look at here you can see the sweat spiders yes people started using that as a cuisine variety of cuisines are there see we are showing you that yes yes you are seeing that and look at here the snakes the snakes are being cut and they are being taken up in as a food and what about here the bat yes children you are able to see look at that that's something nice right see the bat okay so the bat that is being taken up and see when that is taken because they want to solve the food shortages in some place look at here the dogs even the dogs there they have been used in the cuisine right and then we have the scorpions the scorpions do see how they have made and i think they are going to do a grill and then this they are going to have it out and this wet markets particularly wuhan yes so these options they are associated with spread of what the new disease so what happened they said the COVID what we are all suffering we are all now locked down staying inside we are being restrained right it's all because of what they say that there are some zoonotic disease that which these animals capture and that is how it comes to the other persons right so from animals to man that is how there is spread of new disease also right then we have uh, what is not and what about india yes in india you can see first in population look out by 2000 where are we yes there is an exploding rise and what about in terms of the food production so there is tremendous increase in everything so what not we need to have some strategies we need to have some strategies definitely to meet the demands of this growing population right and that is what we are going to see in this today's chapter you're able to follow children yes why should we need a strategy that is what we have been 
seeing in the introduction okay now look at that as when we know like once when we got our independence and all like what happened there was uh, things where they started with a five year plan and in that they wanted to improvise mainly on agriculture and all that they started making some revolutions like it's not like revolution like they wanted to like what we call in terms of evergreen revolution like enhancement of the overall agriculture so like that they started with those plants and that is how the revolutions have been come up and they are going to be associated with certain products and there are some pioneers who initiated this revolution so in the exam they might ask you like what is the revolution and it is associated with what product or sometimes they might ask like who is the father of that revolution okay you are all able to follow yes we'll see this higher production technology driven second green revolution is the protein revolution which is coined by our pm our honorable prime minister narendra modi ji and arun jetli ji so they are the two persons who coined this then we have the oil seed production children you remember like that oil sunflower that yellow color so mustard yellow revolution sam pitroda fish you remember the blue color blue revolution dr arun krishnan okay so then that krishna you remember that uh, vishnu will be in the sea i uh, think that way some blue blue romba krishna blue color blue blue okay then onion production pharmaceuticals prawn production pink revolution so you can think of pink pink prawn pink revolution dargesh patel then the overall agriculture green fields that ones when you think of evergreen revolution which was started in the 11th five year plan then that honey fruits and all no they come under golden revolution honey that gold color you remember then we have the fertilizers the gray revolution okay then egg and all white color no that poultry and all silver silver revolution indira gandhi ji cotton silver fiber revolution then meat tomato and all red color no red revolution vishal tewari potato round revolution it's round potato food grains green revolution it's mostly started up by borlock god and ms swaminathan ji of here middle milk production that white color so white revolution so you have to remember okay all these that is very 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 important okay then we have uh, that is uh, white revolution by vergis kurian so these are some of the uh, products the revolution and the father of revolution so now coming to our interesting round norman borlock is associated with please take up we are going to start a chat now who is norman borlock and he is associated with whether white revolution green revolution blue revolution or yellow revolution i am waiting for your answers please yes please take the chat and start putting it norman borlock yes very good very good anandita excellent yes i want everybody to interact then only it will be nice session okay come on i want everybody to interact yes excellent lakshmi shivani yes excellent very good children very good yes tasnam good yes you are all right the answer is green revolution okay we'll go to the next question yes nidarshana you're right blue revolution is associated with milk fish production onion production meat production waiting for your answers it's a very easy question yes come on i want everybody to answer yes what is the answer
Yes, excellent. Very good, very good. Yes. Yes, come on students. That's the spirit. Yes, you're all right. Yes, the answer is Fish production. Yes, excellent. Now we will move on to the next concept. Yes, the animal husbandry. See, when it comes to animal husbandry, let me give you an idea. See, there was a rapid increase in the world population. This has compelled us to adopt some new strategy, particularly for enhancing the food production. Why? in order to meet the demands of the expanding population. So we have two strategies. One is animal husbandry, another is the plant breeding. So in today's class, we are going to emphasize on the animal husbandry. So before going into animal husbandry, what is animal husbandry? It's actually a science, okay? It's a science of rearing, caring, managing, okay breeding and utilizing these domesticated animals what we call it as livestock so that we are going to see yes so look here so what is animal husbandry it's a science it's defined as an agricultural practice of raising and breeding of livestock like cows buffaloes horses cattle sheep camels goats etc so these are called the livestock and raising and breeding of these livestock you call it as animal husbandry. So you should know that uh, these livestock as you see like we have all these camels, goats, buffaloes and all that. So they are the domesticated animals and from them what the man can hew. So it is not which started just now. It is for millions like when you trace back like years before. Man has started this and now we are putting a tag on it with a scientific implementation and finding certain strategies to enhance the food production. So nearly 70% of our livestock population of the world is there in India and China and the demand in the increase of this population and the demand of the food is also there in these places. But their contribution in the farm products is only 25% only. The livestock population is more, but their contribution is only 25%. Yes. So, it is not only the domesticated animal that you are going to include in the animal husbandry. Rather, you are going to include the poultry, the bee beekeeping, that is the, uh, what you call the uh, apiculture, then the silkworms and then the fisheries, everything do come under the animal husbandry. So you can see that it can also be extended to poultry, farming, fishery, everything. Okay, so what for that they are used? They are mainly used for the milk. See, we are using the domesticated most of those animals from them. We are going to get the milk or we are going to use them in some agricultural operations like ploughing or transportation or harrowing, harvesting, threshing. So we use them, the bullocks. And then we use for leather production, their horns, roofs, bones, etc. for cattle feed, the dung, we use for the biogas, like for the fuel. So like that, the domesticated animals have been used as a part of human, like in every day of its life, not only for agricultural operation, but for the nutritional purpose as well as for commercial purposes also. So you can see that the dairy farming. So it is nothing but actually when we see the dairy farm management, it is actually a controlled and a scientific way of handling the dairy animals. The dairy animals like how? It, see everybody like uh, for thousands of years together, the man knows how to do. But we are putting it in a scientific way. We are handling it in a scientific way, a controlled way of these animals. Like extraction of milk, preparation of various milk products like cheese, butter, curd. So purpose is to increase the yield. Thereby we are going to meet the demand of the population. At the same time the commercial benefit also. So that is where they are targeting with. So coming here for the dairying. 
it is the management of animals for milk and its products that is for the human consumption so the dairy farm management they deal with what the main thing they have lot of processes and systems meant to increase the yield and they want to improvise the quality of the milk so these two are their targets okay so now coming to what are those processes so every farm management they have their processes and that depends upon so many conditions what are those conditions the quality of breed see one thing i'm telling you the quality is important why we talk in terms of quality we have what are called the good quality breeds like jersey or whatever so they are going to give a good yield and at the same time the nutritional value everything but when you are going to take something which has got a disease or it is going to give a low yield of uh, milk and all that we cannot consider to be a good breed and naturally they have to be weeded off so that is very important the quality of breed what you are going to choose second the climatic condition what we talk in terms of those proper maintenance and housing so when you take the cattle actually the domesticated animals okay they have to be given the proper housing facility the in terms of hygiene cleanliness okay and they should have the distancing also then only they cannot contract the disease from one to the other also so all that is very very important avoid that contracting disease and all so the temperature the climate the humidity all matters there then the quality and quantity of that feed or fodder whatever you give so definitely when the quality and quantity because whatever is that they consume that is going to increase their nutritional value that is why you see the cow milk has got more nutrition but compared with the cow milk the buffalo milk has got more value like it has got more 50% of fat and uh, it has got more uh, increase in the protein content also like uh, minerals and all that so that is why buffalo milk is so uh, good in nutritional perspective when you compare it with the cow milk and apart from that like uh, the cleanliness and hygiene of both cattle and handlers whom we call them as the stock keepers so they have to make it that because uh, that cleanliness is what is required in those places so that hygiene is because they have to extract the milk and they have to so that is very important then proper storage and transportation of milk and its products so because it should not be spoiled and all that so they have to take care of all that and maintenance of the record like how many were there like what happened to the thing that census whatever they have to maintain that record and at the same time a regular visit by a veterinarian is essential for what he gives a regular check up to these domesticated animals and advises certain vaccines okay vaccination and all that so that is very important so that is why the veterinarians are requested or asked to uh, visit these dairy farm management so when you come here and talk about here in india what we call they belong to a family what we call it as the bovidae bovidae is the indian family type actually okay so that is called the bovidae which is the domestic cattle so here we have nearly we say bovidae okay the indian cattle so nearly around 26 breeds we have of cattle and seven breeds of buffaloes in india so when you talk about these they differ everywhere like in their morphological feature they do have their own distribution depending upon the place so we have basically the three types what is called the milch breeds drought breeds and general utility breeds what do you mean by milch breeds the one that gives good milk okay so the cows which gives us good milk we call them as the milch cows the milch breeds actually okay then we have what is called the drought so milch breeds cows are gir sahiwal red sindhi so in your exam they can ask like what type of breed is this red sindhi you should know it is a milch breed right so they are very very important so they are very good in producing large quantities of milk when compared with the other breeds what about the drought breeds like malvi nagari so they are actually meant for that 
extra strenuous work they can do a lot of strenuous work that's why we call them as the drought breeds okay like kange and kalai we have in our tamil nadu nageri malvi so like this only your questions can come up in the mcq like what breed and find out the odd one out like that and the general utility breeds that means what they are dual purpose they are for both milk production as well as for the purpose so, so you can see here they are meant for dual purpose so the females they are good milk product producers what about the bullocks they are good drought like they go work they are used for the agricultural operations and all so that is why we call them as the drought animals okay then we have some breeds of indian buffaloes also like mura badwari jafarbadi all that so the buffaloes as you see the milk in buffaloes the yield will be more nearly they say around some 490 one liters annual yield we have for buffaloes when compared with 173 liters in cow so the yield is more in the buffaloes and same way when you say buff, indian buffaloes we call them as we call them as bubalas okay they are called as bubalas bubalis so this is the indian buffaloes so the yield is more when compared with the cow yield annually okay so that is very important 50% more of fat they have got more minerals in it so it is very very nutritious when compared with the cow cow's milk so what are the important livestock diseases that these cattle particularly the dairy animals can get we have the viral disease like foot and mouth disease so they get sort of ulceration near, near their foot and mouth okay probably because of the virus and also the cow pox so that is quite co common they develop blisters around their skin and all that so then we have bacterial disease like rinder pest and uh, tuberculosis where that udder and all no will go for inflammation and all that so it can affect uh, the cow and anthrax also then fungal disease like worms like ring worms they have all around causing ulcerations in their skin so these are some of the important disease that affect the dairy farm management animals now coming to the question round okay so this is a general question which i have not mentioned but i wanted you to take a quick check and just tell me like where is the national dairy research institute is located okay whether it is lucknow patna karnal or ludhiana yes where is it located waiting for your answers ma so this national dairy research institute is so famous in making some exotic breeds new breeds they were very very famous so they were making swiss karan okay and then karan fries such new breeding varieties they are very pioneer where it is located can it, can you all answer where is the national dairy research institute located lucknow patna karnal ludhiana waiting for your answers ma yes excellent ma excellent anandita nidarshana excellent the answer is yes very good it is located in karnal haryana okay it is located in karnal haryana okay excellent excellent students we'll go to the next so before going into this i i wanted you to tell one more thing like when you look into the family bovidae acha so usually we have two set one is called the boss indicus another one is called the boss taurus okay so these are actually called the zebu cattle we say these are all non humped cattle they don't have a hump okay so this zebu cattle and all you see okay so this is where more common you see in india africa and all 
these sort of species. But this boss taurus and all more confined to America, North America, Europe and all that. Okay. So what we see here is the boss indicus under that we have all these species, okay, those varieties. So bovidae, boss indicus, zebu cattle, they have a hum, India and Africa they are quite common. So that you have to know. Now we will move on to the interesting poultry farming. Now we saw about the cattle, what are the types of cattle like milch and then drought breed, then we saw about the dwell purpose breed. Now we have come to the poultry farming. So what is with poultry? It is the raising of what? Those fowls, ducks, turkeys, peas and mainly for what? The egg and the meat. So mainly they are raised for their egg as well as the flesh, the meat purpose. But the poultry products, whatever, they have got a very high source of protein. So very rich source of protein comes from the poultry. So what is the advantage that we are going to have? A livestock rearing particularly pertaining with poultry see it's very easy to raise okay only a little amount of uh, initial uh, investment is required very easy to raise second when you take these poultry sort of thing they can adapt them themselves to the extreme of the climate variations that is there and the lifespan is also not very uh, what you call something very uh, big or something where it is going to live for years together, it's got a very shorter lifespan. And at the same time, they are very fast breeders also. Okay, it is not like 280 days, like uh, uh, 9 months in cow and uh, 10 months for buffalo. It's not like that. They are having a fast breeding system there. And uh, <laughs> comparatively, you take the space for managing will be very less than you look for the other cattle purpose. So, you can see the income written within the 6 months itself, okay. So, that is why anything that is related with poultry, that egg and all that, we call it as silver revolution. That is why we call that as the silver re revolution. So, poultry farming when you see, we have what is called uh, in our place, we have the domestic fall, which we call it as the <coughs> gallus domesticus, <coughs> gallus domesticus. So, this is the domestic for thing which is the major poultry bird that has come from that ring, red jungle fowl we say. It is of two types. We have indigenous type and exotic type. In indigenous type, what you are seeing is called the asil. They give for the cock fighting, no? Very common and famous, asil. So, it is a good table bird. What do you mean by good table bird? For the meat and it is not a good sitter or a layer. Like it is not good for laying those eggs and all that. So, it is a good for meat and it is good for cock fighting. So, that is where it is. So, asil is an indigenous variety meant for meat and cock fighting. Okay, so that is very important. There are other indigenous like chittagong, barsa, donkey, like that many are there. So, anil, asil is one of the best table bird they say, but uh, it cannot be raised actually because of the commercial purpose because it has got a very poor growth and low fertility that is why it's not a good sitter also so that is why but it's a good table bird okay so coming for the next type of indigenous the chittagong what i said so chittagong is what indigenous type of domestic fall which is yellow color you can see there so it is a good layer as well as a good table bird so that is where it is important okay then we have another indigenous which I said gagus. It is a variable. So, both for good meat and egg. So, in indigenous we saw that asil, then we saw the chittagong and then we are seeing the gagus. So, among this the chittagong is good for what? Meat and egg. Meat and egg. This is for only the meat. Okay. So, that you should remember. Then we have uh, the other type, what we call the exotic type. Here four important classes are there. American class, Asiatic class, English class and Mediterranean class. So the places from where they have evolved. The Plymouth is important, which is the most popular breed in USA. Okay. Apart from that, we have the Rhode Island, New Hampshire and all that. Then the Asiatic type, I will show the pictures. So, look here the American class, this is supposed to be the best breed in the USA, Plymouth, Rhode Island, 
New Hampshire. So they can ask you like uh, Plymouth uh, belongs to what type? It's an exotic type, right? Or whether Chittagong or whatever Asil, it's an indigenous breed. So they can ask the breeds of foil, the domestic foil, from where have they come up? So we have actually the poultry birds classified as broilers. What do you mean by broilers? They are mainly meant for meat, like this plymouth and all. If you say layers means they are good for laying eggs. What are cockerels? They are young male fowl. When we say rooster, they are mature male fowl. So that is important. Okay. So coming for the Asiatic type, the Brahma, Langzan, Cochin. So see, they are all the exotic types. They are the exotic types that we see here. Okay. The Cochin or uh, the Langhan and all that. Then English, we have the Sussex and Astrop. So they can ask you like Sussex. Okay. So it is a, a domestic fowl belonging to which breed? Whether it is indigenous or whether it is English class or whether it is that Mediterranean class. So that is how your MCQs will be put forth. So you should be prepared for that also. Coming to the Mediterranean class, we have this white legon. So that is very uh, important. It is a good broiler uh, variety and then the anacona. Then we have the buttercup. So there are many varieties in the Mediterranean class itself. Okay, so the domestic fowl, whatever we have seen, they are evolved from that red jungle fowl, whatever. So, the domesticated fowls will in include all the chickens, duck, turkey, peasant, everything. So, they are meant mainly for what? The meat and the egg. So, we have the two main types, the indigenous type and exotic type. The indigenous type, I told the asil, chittagong, that ganger. Okay, the chittagong and then we had the asil, bursa and all that. What about the exotic type? We had that Plymouth, Sussex, White Legon, okay, Ancona, then we had Brahma, okay. So, like that we have many exotic varieties also. So, next we have what are the important aspects of poultry farming? So, the poultry farming is one thing. We saw in the first few slides that it is very less investment needed. You can see the income just coming up and booming in the next six months. All that we saw, it's easy, the space required and all the thing. But one main thing, the selection of the disease free is important. Like every time you would have come across with that bird flu and all. If one thing in that contracts that infection the entire thing will get damaged so the selection of the disease free and suitable breed is very important in our poultry farming then the farm conditions that proper and safe farm condition is important then the feed water the hygiene and health care that's why regular visit by the veterinarians is important there so because the vet has to come there he has to look in for the, uh, any other illness and if anything so, they need to be isolated. Otherwise, the entire poultry will go in for full collapse. So, that has to be looked for. It's because the poultry disease are quite common. Like we have disease like what is called the Ranicate disease which is quite common. It's caused by the virus where the they will have coughing and sneezing. It's something amazing, no? Only we thought humans can cough and sneeze. Look at that. They also can do that. So, fowls also can do coughing, sneezing. So, it is a viral disease. And sometimes they can have uh, like uh, na nasal discharge. Like we say discharge coming from the eye like tears and all will come. So, like uh, infectious bronchitis. Even that foul pox is common. Same way bacterial. They can have the what you call the Marx disease. Where there will be paralysis of the young ones and all. Cholera. Okay, and aflatoxicosis, a very common fungal infection or they can have the viral bird flu. Okay, so these are all some of the common diseases that the poultry, mainly the fowl that gets these disease infected and uh, it is going to affect their entire population also. So, regular visit of the veterinarian is important and at the same time the checkups, the vaccination, everything has to be taken care. Okay. So, this Ranicat disease they have asked and then uh, brooder pneumonia from that itself you know aspergillosis is a fungal infection, thrush and then they have this mycoplasmosis and spiricates this bacterial disease 
okay and then pullorum is also common so coming to the question round the birds which are reared for eggs are called what i'm waiting for your answers they are called broilers or layers or cocks or hen what is the answer waiting for your answers yes come on is that interesting we saw about cattle now we are seeing about the poultry those fowls what are they are they are meant for egg and meat and what are the one that we rear for eggs called yes 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 very good i could see people answering excellent everybody please interact very good very good excellent yes 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 you are all right they are called your answer is right they are called the layers yes they are called the layers we'll go to the next question yes excellent chittagong is a indigenous type exotic type indigenous and good layer exotic and broilers what is the answer waiting for your answer chittagong what is chittagong and which option you would choose yes waiting for your answers yes excellent i see people started answering excellent anandita yes everybody yes keep posting your answers you know the answer yes come on you're all right yes nidarshana shivani good good nilambari yes very good yes the answer is indigenous and good layer we saw that chittagong right it's an indigenous type yes it's a good layer also so that is where whereas asil is what it's a good table good table meat right it's good meant for meat okay so that is very important next we are coming to nice interesting part of this animal husbandry is animal breeding from examination point of view definitely you will get a question from this chapter that is from this topic animal breeding okay now we saw what are the strategy that you are going to see like how it is made in case of dairy farm or in case of poultry farming but there is something like how you have to choose the particular quality of the breed that is there in dairy farm as well as it was there in the poultry so how are we going to choose that exact the breed so there you have to have a knowledge on the animal breeding techniques when we say animal breeding it can be natural that is happening or it can be by artificial also okay so in animal breeding as you see right so in animal breeding we have uh, what is called mainly we want to increase the yield of animal and at the same time we want to increase the yield which should be like disease resistant like they should not have more prone for developing diseases they they should give a good yield okay so that is very important so what are we going to see so the basic aim of the animal breeding is to increase the animal yield and whatever the quality that it is producing that should be improvised so in animal breeding we have a natural technique and then we have what is called the artificial so in natural we have mainly the two types what we call the inbreeding and outbreeding okay the outbreeding is again they are divided as cross breeding okay and then we have outcrossing and then we have the interspecific hybridization so we have inbreeding outbreeding this is the natural i am talking about the natural breeding so inbreeding outbreeding in outbreeding we have outcrossing cross breeding and then we are having the interspecific hybridization okay 
so first we will see about what is inbreeding it's quite simple you are going to breed okay the animals okay both are of what they are of the same breed that is very very important so you are going to select a superior male and you are going to take a superior female of that cattle and you are going to mate so you are going to get a pure line of generations there so what is the advantage of inbreeding homozygosity is increased but it is exposing all the harmful recessive gene see one generation it might skip but what happens to the subsequent generations that is coming up so there will be exposure or expression of those recessive sometimes even har harmful genes so that is where the drawback comes another drawback which comes as they get uh, mated within the closely related animal they will have actually the reduction in their fertility the productivity so once where they were very good in giving the yield and uh, where they were so stable in resisting them from various disease as it goes on what happened that loses that that efficiency in terms of yield as well as in terms of the disease also so they will so that is why it is very important like you have to know that uh, that uh, there is a continuous Uh, breeding of this closely related animals okay usually will reduce the fertility and productivity what we call it as inbreeding depression so inbreeding is a breeding between the animals of the same kind and a superior male and a superior female okay so they will be taken up for the mating purpose where they will develop that pure lines but what is happening here the breeding will increase the homozygosity that is one thing it will increase the homozygosity so what will happen more recessive genes are getting harmful genes will get exposed and at the same time it is going to cause what is called the inbreeding depression what is inbreeding depression the fertility and the productivity is going to get decline as the generations are passing through now when it comes to the outbreeding it is the breeding but between unrelated animals so what you mean by unrelated animals like they are unrelated which may be between individuals of the same breed like uh, they have no common ancestors or some four to six uh, six generations later like uh, there will be difference in that breed so that what we call it as the outbreeding so it's between the unrelated animals so in that the first type is what the outcrossing so here th there is going to be a cross same breed okay but no common ancestor so in the exam they can ask you this no ancestral relation but they mate what type of crossing it is it is out crossing okay so four to six generations so what is the best thing in this it is going to overcome the inbreeding depression so when they find a superior quality uh, what you call a male and a superior quality female in the long run they are going to have the inbreeding depression so they want to overcome so they just take a diversion get it relate with some other not they are of the same breed but they don't have that common ancestor at least four to six generation with that they are going to allow it to mate so that is how they are able to overcome the inbreeding depression so that that productivity the fertility that can be restored that is the idea behind okay so what is the in case of the cross breeding the cross breeding when i say okay that is very important so like it is actually between the members of different breeds the members of different breeds but same species so that is very important But what you see here the same breed same species but here different breeds but same species so you are going to take superior male of one breed you are going to mate it with a superior female of an another breed okay so there's no common ancestor thing there that two different breeds when they combine they give a new variety like we have the hisredale they ask this definite question in your mcq what is hisredale it is a from the cross breeding cross between what between the sheep that is developed in punjab which is the merino ram and the baikar nave so between that what is a new breed we got it is the hisredale so see here cross breeding so baikarani and merino ram 
So in this two only we got what is called the Hisredale. So that is a new uh, variety that has been developed probably because of the crossbreeding. So you take a superior from Marino ram, you take a superior female from the Baikarani, male and female, you are going to mate. So they are different breed, same species. Okay. So in crossbreeding you are getting a new one which is called the Hisredale. So whatever the superior qualities will be there in the new variety. Okay. So this is where with that. So coming to the next is interspecific hybridization. What is that with interspecific hybridization? It is actually the crossing between the members of different species. So there is no relation at all. So this is one different uh, animal. This is another different animal. Like how we say the mule. So mule is between what? A donkey and a horse. You take a male donkey and a female horse mated mule is there but one thing you should know the progeny will be stronger in terms when compared with their parental origin so this mule but they will be infertile okay they cannot uh, reproduce but they will be very stronger what about uh, in terms with hiney so when it comes to hiney okay so hiney is actually the hybrid that is between the male horse and the female donkey okay so we saw very important from examination that's why I'm emphasizing again inbreeding okay and outbreeding it is a natural method outbreeding is of outcrossing crossbreeding and interspecific hybridization inbreeding same uh, breed it is between the animals a male and a superior female so what is going to happen as when it is there you get a pure line of the generation but the homozygosity will increase and then there will be exposure of those harmful recessive genes every generation. The productivity, the fertility, everything will come down as generation passes, which we call it as inbreeding depression. Okay. Now, we have what is called the outbreeding. That is, here in outbreeding, no common ancestors, but same breed. You remember that. So, what is going to happen? Here, it is outcrossing. In outcrossing, same breed. Okay. But they don't have that ancestral thing. Either 4 to 6 generation, it will be different. So, you take a male and a female and allow to mate. So, that you get a new line there, which will overcome the inbreeding depression. So, what is going to overcome the inbreeding depression? This MCQ, they have asked in one of the uh, previous 2 or 3 years back. So, inbreeding depression is overcome by what? Outcrossing. So, that should be your answer. Then, what about the crossbreeding? Crosses between what different breed, but they are same species. So you are taking of both superior of those two different breeds, but they are same species. So you get a variety which will be more superior in quality. That is like Isredale. So Isredale is what outcome from crossbreeding. What about uh, interspecific hybridization? That totally different. Two different species. Like you can see a donkey and a horse. You get a male, but they are infertile, but they are more strong. That is where you have to know. So, they use for all the uh, transport and carrying heavy loads and all these mules will be used. So, that is where you need to understand. Okay. So, that is where you all should know. Okay. So, shall we move to the next? See, this is a hiney. This is the mule. So, this is between, a, this also can be a question. So, a male donkey with a female horse. That is a mule. Okay. What about the hiney? Hiney is between what? The rivers. Okay. So, that you remember. Okay. Next comes the interspecific hybridization. In that, we develop what is called the heterosis or hybrid vigor. It is a behavior which is quite opposite to the inbreeding depression. Here, that hybrid will be superior to their parent in one or more trait. Like you see mules. Okay. It is between the donkey uh, that is the maize and donkeys. But they have more strength, higher resistance to disease, longer lifespan. Okay, so all the superiority characters they imbibe. They have more resistance, they have long lifespan, greater strength. So that is what they are imbibing, which is called the hybrid vigor, which is quite opposite to that of the inbreeding depression. What is there in inbreeding depression? The productivity is becoming less. And what is happening? The fertility is also becoming less. They become more. So, but here everything superior is imbibed by the progenies. That is what is important, which is called hybrid 
vigor. So, hybrid vigor is an advantage of interspecific hybridization. Interspecific hybridization is a type of outbreeding. Okay. Next, we have the artificial method. So, what are the artificial methods of animal breeding? We have the artificial insemination. So, how we studied in human reproduction? The same way here. Here, the semen will be collected. Okay. So, the semen will be collected actually and uh, they will be taken from a high pedigreed male. Okay. And they will be just uh, transferred to the female the, by the breeder. So, that is the artificial insemination. So, the collected semen, same way like how we frozen store or human, same way they are stored. But the success rate even after the breeding, sometimes it might be low also. So, it has to be taken in terms of proper uh, storage facility. They have to be freezed and then uh, like uh, within uh, uh, like uh, 7 days, probably in that they have to be used up and all that. Now, there is one method what is called the moyot. What is that called? The multiple ovulation and embryo transfer. This is one of the new, new technology that has come up to increase the production of breeds. In this, the females will be first given the hormones. What is this hormone? The follicle stimulating hormone. What is the role of this hormone ma? That is going to increase the follicular development. So, we have many follicles. So, in the ovary when you see, there will be many follicles. So, it is going to bring about the growth of the follicles. No? And it is going to cause what is called super ovulation. See, every cycle one egg will come out. Here, instead of that, 6 to 8 eggs will be released. Such females will be either inseminated or it will be mated. So, what will happen? Once when the eggs come to this 8 or 32 cell stage, they will be transferred to surrogate mothers. What do you mean by surrogate mothers? Like they will just bear the child. Okay, they are not the biological mother. They will just provide the room for just carrying and delivering the fetus. So, here 8 to 32 cell stage when it comes, they will just transfer it to the other cows which is called the surrogate mothers. So, this moyot is a new technique by which in one slot they can increase the yield of the uh, breed. So, that is what is common. That is multiple ovulation embryo transfer where we give the gonadotrophins. Sometimes like you see infertility cases also will be there. Like they are not able to uh, give birth to the progeny. In that cases, we give gonadotrophins to overcome that. Uh, the, like that injections are also available. Okay. So, the super ovulation is uh, done in the cows and uh, they will be artificially inseminated and once when they reach that uh, uh, so many cell stage like 8 to 32 cell stage, they will be taken up and they will be transferred to the surrogate mothers. Then we have the multiple ovulation and embryo transfer. Okay. So, here what is they are doing here? The genetic mother will be a high pedigreed one. Okay. So, now she will become available again for the another round. So, why is that the mother whoever is not allowed to give birth? So, as she is going to give on, what will happen to her health? It will deteriorate. So, here once when the thing has come to that 8 or they will just transfer to the surrogate. But the genetic mother is again available for what? The next to super ovulation period. So, like that they are using this Moya technique again and again so that you can increase the yield or increase the yield of that particular breed whatever of our choice. So, this technology they are using everywhere like in terms of cattle, sheep, rabbits, buffaloes, mares, etc. So, wherever you want a high yield, suppose you want a high yield of breed that is giving more of uh, uh, meat or you want a high yield somewhere milk is needed or you want a high yield where it can overcome and do all the agricultural operation or in terms of disease resistance. So, here you can choose the breed that is where our scientific strategy is there and that is how it is enhancing our management in terms of animal husbandry. So, artificially also can be done or natural methods where they do and it has been done for years together. But this technology is making us to see the yield in a faster, not like wait for the natural method. So, that is where it is very advantageous. Okay. Okay. So, that is what I am trying to tell. 
So in in vitro fertilization in this technique the unfertilized eggs the same way what happens like the test tube we take those eggs fertilized by sperm under the laboratory condition once when they develop into embryo we transplant into the surrogate mothers so like this the techniques are available so you take the superior quality of the breed you take you identify you choose everything is given to you okay that is where the genetic engineering the biotechnology are advancing to any extent so you can choose what is what you want okay so that is where they choose and that is what we are using in the form of ivf so we can very well um, what you can take it from the ov duct of the super ovulated cow so that is how we are doing okay so next is cloning the cloning is more advanced breeding technique method in this what happen identical twin you can make it up so what is cloning like how asexual reproduction there is one cell dividing exactly the identical copy of the parent into two the same way in this the nucleus is removed from that unfertilized egg they will be replaced with a nucleus that is taken from the undifferentiated cell so the superior individual will be cloned and the traits will be retained so like that only the cloning is done but more ethical issues are there it has to be done under caution so cloning is also one more advanced breeding technique where we can increase the yield of the management particularly the animal breeding technique so see here cloning so the cloning actually uh, how i said like uh, the swiss karan and the Sw uh, swiss fries which were uh, actually developed in our karnal haryana india so this cloned calf garima this also was produced from our national dairy research institute by cloning technique okay so now i think we'll move to the question session i hope you understood with today's class so we'll finish the illustration mule is an example of interspecific hybridization mod super ovulation in breeding so mule is an example of what i'm waiting for your answers yes very good children please excellent excellent i could see shivani excellent yes very good nidarshana anindita yes i wanted everybody tasmin lakshmi i want everybody to participate please yes very good very good yes excellent so the answer is what the interspecific hybridization because they are of two different species okay it is between the horse and the donkey excellent students moit what i told is just now that super ovulation that technique both they are interrelated what about inbreeding it cannot happen so it is the interspecific hybridization which technique is used for the herd improvement moit artificial insemination interspecific hybridization control breeding techniques experiments what is the answer Yes, excellent students. Yes, come on, waiting for your answers. Very good, excellent, you are all. So, what technique are we using to improve our cattle, particularly the domestic, the livestock? Very good. Yes, 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 Nidarshana. I could see the answers. Yes, please post. Very, very good. Yes, we'll see the answer. Yes, the answer is excellent. It is the moid. So what we saw. So we are going to first treat that animal with a gonadotrophin like FSH. We are going to make it super ovulate, and then from that, when it comes to 8 to 32 cell stage, we are going to just transfer it to a surrogate mother. So that is the technique that we are using rather than all these. Okay. What about this which refers to breeding between male and female and of the same breed for 4 to 6 generations outbreeding, inbreeding, crossbreeding, outcrossing. Excellent last I could see everybody coming up very very good good Revati, good Tasmin, Anandita, Sri Lakshmi excellent. Yes, waiting for your answers, ma. Good.
yes all of you are giving your answers excellent yes let me wait and see but understand the question breeding between male and female and of the same breed for 4 to 6 generation the answer is in breeding excellent excellent students very good very good so now i hope you understood with what has been taught to you all today i just started my class with introduction to the strategies for enhancement in the food production like there is an explosion in the population and at the same time the demand is also on the expanding round so we need certain strategies that are that we are going to study in terms of animal husbandry and plant breeding in today animal husbandry i taught you about the dairy farm management and the poultry okay in dairy farm management we saw about the indian species the bovide and particularly the zebu cattle and how is that uh, we had the three varieties like milch variety for milk and the drought variety for various uh, agricultural operation and the dwell purpose which is meant for both milk purpose as well as the male ones helping out in the drought that is the hard work scenario things like agricultural plowing etc so they are for dwell purpose so we saw that also so we saw what is livestock under that we saw about the cows and the buffaloes okay and what are the common disease like rinder pest cow pox is yes, anthrax and all that then coming on for the poultry we saw about what is the indigenous type okay and then we saw the exotic types and what are the common disease that they do uh, get like rani cat disease okay and then the fowl pox the bird flu and all that then the poultry is actually meant for the layers okay and it is also meant for the broilers like for the meat as well as the egg so that we saw with that and how are the steps that is taken to have a good management of either the cattle or the poultry then we saw about the breeding techniques we had a natural breeding which is called inbreeding outbreeding under outbreeding we saw what is outcrossing in inbreeding one of the drawback is inbreeding depression and then we saw about how this inbreeding depression is overcome by that outbreeding that is outcrossing okay and then we had crossbreeding example hisredale and then uh, we had the interspecific hybridization think of that mule okay then we saw about the artificial methods where we had the artificial insemination then that moid technique that multiple over embryo transfer techniques and then uh, we saw about the in vitro in vitro techniques cloning so these are some of the artificial methods that are used to increase the yield of the cattle or any domestic as the livestock so that is the one we saw i hope you all understood the topic today yes ma'am what is blue revolution blue revolution is meant for the fish the fishery thing so i think in the beginning of the chapter we saw this with uh, the product what is that is associated i said blue you remember krishnan i told and i asked you to remember the fish which is there in the blue water no? so something related with that okay so blue revolution is meant with what the fishery the aquatic okay so that is where so thank you so much students being in spite of the festival i could see all of you uh, coming and attending the session thank you so much have a great and uh, enjoy the evening with a festival. Thank you students. Thank you so much. And Raj is asking like white and green revolution. White is for poultry. That silver we say. And green is meant for the cereal spa. Okay. Thank you so much students. Any doubts? Shall I wind up? Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you students, thank you so much.